about hardware today, hydrofoil hardware specifically. We're going to go through uh, kind of the sizes, different types, uh, what they're made of, drive types, and how to measure them. Uh, believe it or not, you know, this seems like something really simple. Uh, then again, you know, it's it just like everything else, it's actually pretty complex. There's a bunch of different um, terms and a bunch of different measuring techniques that you need to know to kind of get the right stuff. So we're going to go through that uh, here. So we'll start with... Um, T-nuts first, I guess, because that's the most novel to the hydrofoil word, world. So these are all T-nuts here. We have uh, M8 stainless nuts, M8 brass T-nuts, and then M6 stainless um, T-nuts, and then the wizard hat setup. Um, let's start with the brass first. So these brass T-nuts are literally just milled out of brass. Brass is a non-corrosive metal that's easy to machine. Um, it's really nice to machine. That's why these were kind of the first ones on the market. These were originally made for a mass track on a uh, windsurfer. And this, the, these have always kind of been around. So when hydrofoils were first developed with the double US box you know, track system we know today, this is the first T-nut that they put in there. Um, the, the thing about brass is it's great. It doesn't corrode, easy to machine, but it's not as strong as steel. So, you know, moving to a stainless steel T-nut like this, not only is it a ton stronger, but, you know, it has a larger area on the track. So it's really difficult to rip one of these out the track just because it's it has a larger um, area on that actual track than the, the old brass ones. Um, so these are you know, an obvious choice. Um, then again, it's overkill from, you know, most situations like the brass ones are plenty strong. There's, there's four of them on there. And then the M6 is the same, you know, dimensions here. It'll fit in the same U S box as any of the other ones, but it's, it's threaded for a smaller bolt in M6. So like, uh, the Armstrong, the Takumas, all those guys use, uh, the M6. So those would be M6 T nuts. Um, the wizard hat set hardware set is a completely different situation it actually it turns everything upside down. So you have a slider nut on the bottom, just like the rest, except it doesn't have a threaded um, nut here. There's no threads. There's just a slot. Take one of these T-bolts, slide it inside of there like so, then a silicone O-ring to hold everything together. And then this is actually gonna stick up out of your hydrofoil box like this, kind of backwards. The key to the whole thing is the cone nut here. There's a countersunk side and a flat side. So if you normally use a countersunk base plate that would use like a flat head bolt or a pan head bolt, you know, you, you just flip it. Um, so this is countersunk side down. This just uh, turns right on there and you tighten everything up. And then if you're going to use a pan head style base plate, like say the Moses, you'd flip it and you'd go, you'd go this way with the flat side down, you know, and just tighten it up. Um, and that's the beauty, and it kind of looks like a, a hat, kind of looks like a wizard hat there. That's why it's called wizard hat hardware. The other good, the other advantage of the wizard hat is it articulates um, inside that slot. It's allowed to kind of move a bit um, because of the oval slot and the um, shape of the inside uh, bottom part of the T-bolt. Um, so if you're shimming, it will, it will allow you to keep that pressure nice and perpendicular to the box on a shimmed um, base plate, right? Which is key. You have a couple different sizes of T-bolt to put in there to make it exactly perfect, depending on the depth of your box and the thickness of your base plate. Or, you know, if you're using shims, you'd wanna go with the longer T-bolts, obviously, all that kind of stuff. The other great thing about the Wizard Hat is you can use this with either M8 or M6. The Cone nut is set up to countersunk into an M8 um, flathead bolt slot or an M6 flathead bolt slot. And then the pan head, obviously it doesn't matter. Um, these are M6 bolts, but they can be used in an M8 hole or an M6 hole. And then the cone nut just takes up the difference, um, you know, when you tighten it down. So it's great, kind of one-stop shop, wizard hat always works. Next, we're gonna talk about uh, hardware actual bolts. Um, so this is a 20 millimeter M8 pan head bolt. It's an M8 by 20, right? Um, you can tell it's a pan head bolt because it kind of has that mushroom top to it. There's a bunch of bolts that look just like a pan head. Uh, some are called like button heads. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but they, they look similar to this. You can tell it's a pan head 
because it has this rounded top and usually has kind of a straight side there and then a flat bottom. Um, and that's a pan head. So a, a, the same sized flat head, which some people incorrectly call a countersunk bolt or like a cone head bolt, um, M8 by 20 flat head bolt. Um, you can see it looks a lot smaller than that uh, pan head, but it, you know, it just depends on how you measure it. You're going to measure a pan head from the end of the bolt to the top of that. Here, let's do it this way. To the top of the, or the bottom of that little thing. So you can see it's 20 millimeters right there. Right about there. Yeah. Perfect. And then the flat head, you're actually going to measure the other way, all the way from one end to the other. Like that. You can see it's a little, I mean, it's not exactly perfect, but 20 millimeters end to end. So pan head, you measure underneath that pan part to the end of the bolt, 20 millimeters, flat head, the whole thing like this. Okay. So the other type of bolt we deal with regularly is called a shoulder bolt, which is this right here. This is meant to go into a counter bore hole with flat edges, kind of like the hover glide mast uh, through the fuselage, through the wing setup usually has a Allen key drive. And this is going to be measured just like that um, pan head from the bottom of the shoulder up to the top of the bolt. So this should be, let's see, 40, I think. Yeah. So there's a 40 mil bolt. There's an M8 by 40 um, shoulder bolt, right? And that's, a sh that's what they look like. They can have threads all the way to the top. You know, most of them have a little break in the threads, but they don't have to look like that. Um, and that's it. It's a couple different materials. Uh, you can see these two shoulder bolts here. These are two different materials. The one on the right is titanium and the one on the left is 316 stainless. Um, not all stainless steel is considered equal. Um, kind of the, the standard for saltwater operations is 316 stainless. And that's just the amount of chromium and other non-corrosive elements they mix in with the steel. Um, 316 is pretty standard. So this is a 316 shoulder bolt here, and this is a titanium um, shoulder bolt on the right. You can kind of see the difference. So if you have a bunch of hardware in a box, you're going to pick this up and it's going to be the weight of like aluminum. You're going to be like, oh wow, it's super light. And then it has that kind of dark um, metallic look to it, right? That really cool Batman looking titanium look to it. The stainless, uh, 316 stainless, is going to be shinier, but not as tinny as like a normal zinc-coated um, steel bolt. You know, if you if you look at zinc-coated hardware that's not stainless steel, it's like a grade down from this. It's going to look way tinny, uh, and you'll be able to tell the difference to the stainless. And the stainless steel is going to be the same weight as like a, a steel bolt. You know, they're pretty heavy. Um, so that's kind of it. Differences in drives, we talked about these are uh, both Allen keys, okay? So Allen keys, this is all metric stuff. So this is an Allen key six, I don't know if you can see that, number six, this is gonna fit right in there uh, to both those those uh, heads. Uh, the smaller bolts, like this is a smaller uh, shoulder bolt here, an M6 shoulder bolt, same exact design, but a smaller key, right? So this is an Allen key that's gonna fit in there. And this is an H5, you know, five mil Allen key is gonna fit in that head right there. You can have Allen keys, you can have Phillips. Here's an M6 flathead. Uh, you know, this looks like a 50 millimeter flathead bolt to me. And it has a, a regular um, Phillips head drive on it. You know, there's a bunch of different length or size Phillips heads. This is number three. Um, and it just barely fits in there. It's a little big for this, but you can see it fits nice and snug. The number three screwdriver, uh, Phillips head screwdriver, is probably the best to have kind of in your arsenal. Some of the bigger bolts will use uh, a number four, which are actually hard to find. But a number three is pretty good for most bolts. You can get you can get in a you know a larger M8 thread with a with a number three. Um, so Allen keys, you know, you'll need a set of Allen keys. Maybe just the the sizes you need for your different bolts. And then lastly, you have Torx, which is another type. And the Torx head, let's see if we can get it, get this in here on the, on the video. Yeah, you see that head there? It's like a star or star drive right there. And these have designations like T30, T40, T45. 
This is a T30, I believe. Yeah, T30. And this is going to be most M6. This is the uh, titanium hardware from Armstrong. Um, and most uh, M6 bolts are going to take a T30. That's a T30 right there. Okay, T30. Um, you're just going to want to get some of those if you use it. The larger bolts, this is a, um, sorry, that's not the right one. This is an M8 Torx here. And the M8 Torx uses like a 45. Big dog. Look at that sucker. Huge. So that's going to be a lot bigger. Fits in there nice and tight. Um, there's also a T40 I've seen on, on some M8s. Uh, but don't be surprised if you get one and it's, it's a different size or maybe a different drive than you're used to. So another really common one is to see an Allen key on like flathead bolts. Lift does this. Um, the good news is they're all pretty standard. So this is going to fit the same size. This is that number five Allen key that we had for that M6. It's going to fit the same size, and that's kind of nice. So usually you can get away with, you know, one Allen key. This is the number five for most of your most of your bolts. Sometimes there's one size smaller, but like both of these are the same. Even though one's M6 and one's M8, um, they're the same size. Um, okay, so I think that's it. So measuring, we talked about measuring. The uh, one note on the Armstrong hardware here, they have kind of this uh, really silly setup that's just crazy expensive. Um, you, you actually need to use this, the washer that goes on top, you actually have to use that with their setup. So I'm just gonna take this off. This can be replaced by any you know, normal M6 stainless, this will replace that. So they're the same size, it's no big deal. Um, this bolt can be replaced by any M6 pan head bolt. Um, it's no problem. So if this is too short for your board or whatever, you just get a normal stainless 316 M6 um, pan head bolt and it'll replace this. You don't, this doesn't have to be titanium. But this piece here, this washer, um, interfaces with the base plate uh, the carbon base plate on the Armstrong, and you need to use this. What's great is the wizard hat cone nut actually fits perfectly in this. Um, it seats in there with the countersunk side down perfectly. I don't know if you can see that in the video. It's just perfect. So if you wanted to um, scrap this, Armstrong set up a, a set of these repl four, four replacement hardware for Armstrong. It's like 70 bucks, I think, 60, 65 bucks, 69 dollars. Um, you can get a full wizard hat set for like 25, 35 bucks, um, and it'll fit perfectly in there, which is cool. And you just get the right T bolts to make it exactly perfect. Um, you know, and you can even get new M6 stainless, um, you know, T nuts uh, as well if you want to replace the whole thing for like half the price of a of a replacement Armstrong setup. Um, yeah, so hardware. If you guys have questions on the hardware stuff, just give us a call at 281-508-6485 or leave a comment below the video. The reason um, we know so much about hardware is this is a lot of this is actually designed by us. We invented the foil mount um, about, uh, what, six years ago? And we couldn't use, you know, these thick brass peanuts. They were too thick. So we went to a, a low profile track system. We had to invent first M8 low profile, you see how thin those are, M8 low profile T-nuts, and then later M6 low profile T-nuts, and then the version three of the, of the carbon foil mount, we went even thinner, where there wasn't even room for a bolt to kind of go through this into the board. There was no room, so we ended up flipping it upside down and inventing the um, wizard hat setup. So we have a fully stocked uh, you know, hardware store here at the shop, uh, we literally have everything. I think we have every size shoulder bolt, M6, M8, every size flathead, um, you know, M6, M8, every size pan head, M6, M8, and massive amounts of T-nuts and everything else. Um, you know, so if, if you need something, you know, feel free to reach out and uh, ask us about it or just give us a call. Um, most of the stuff is on our website. You can just order and make it happen. Hope this finds you well. And hopefully this helped with your hardware, hydrofoil hardware um, questions.